In this video, I'll show you how to put an image on a web page. Before I do, let's just remind ourselves where we got to before. This is the web page I created previously in Notepad, nurseryrhymes.html. Let's take a look at the code. To do this, I need to open it in Notepad again. I've got Notepad running over here, so I simply need to drag the file across and drop it onto Notepad. There's the hypertext. If I want to see what it looks like in a browser, I can just double click the file. My default browser is Google Chrome, so Windows has just opened up the file in Chrome for me. You can see the effect of the tags. I've used the heading 1 tags here, and I've used the paragraph tags for each of these lines of my nursery rhyme. Notice how the tags come in pairs. We have the opening tag in angle brackets, and the closing tag also in angle brackets, but with a slash there as well. I'm going to make a small change to the appearance of this using some other tags before I put an image on the page. I'd like the word pussycat to stand out in bold, so I'm going to use the bold tag on either side of the word. B on one side, slash B on the other side. I'd also like the word owl to be in bold. Same again. B on one side, slash B on the other side. I'll resave the page and then reload it into the browser window and notice how the word owl and pussycat are now standing out. I'd also like beautiful pea green to be in italics. So I'm going to use the italic tag here. I in angle brackets on one side and on the other side slash I. Let's see the effect. Reload the page. Beautiful pea green in italics. Now I'd like the word P to be italic and bold. So what I'm going to do now is nest the bold tags inside the italic tags. In fact, I've nested the bold tags inside the italic tags, which themselves are nested inside a pair of paragraph tags. Let's see the effect. So the word P is now both bold and italic. As I said then, tags usually come in pairs, not always, but usually. And when we have a pair of tags like this, we say that they are well formed. If I accidentally leave out the closing bold tag, watch what happens. Everything from the word P is now bold all the way to the end of the document because I haven't told the browser that I want to stop displaying the text in bold. Now that's well formed. Let's resave that and reload. That's more like it. So the question is, how do we put an image on the page? Well, before you begin, you need to find a suitable image. I've already done this. I've actually created this image myself. It's a PNG file, but you could use a JPEG or a GIF. It doesn't really matter as long as it's an image. Now, it's tempting to simply drag this file into Notepad, but that won't work. What we need to do is put some hypertext inside the web page telling the browser where the image can be found. And I'm going to do this using the image tags. IMG is the opening tag. Slash IMG is the closing tag. Now the truth is I don't need the closing tag. I'll say a little bit more about that in a moment. What I need to do now though is tell the browser what the image is called and where it can be found. Well, the image is in the same folder as the web page itself. So all I really need to do here is tell the browser what the image is called. Owlandpussycat.png And I'm going to do that using an attribute of the opening image tag. An attribute goes inside the angle brackets. I'm going to use something called the source attribute, SRC. And inside double quotes, I'm going to specify the name of the file. Now I'm going to make very, very sure that I've spelt that correctly. I think that's okay, but the way to find out is to save the page reload in the browser, and there's my image.
that's worked fine. Now let me just show you what happens if I move the image to another location. I'm going to go into the folder where my web page is and I'm going to create a subfolder, a new folder inside this folder, which I'll call pictures. And then I'm going to drag my image into that folder. So my image is no longer in the same place as the actual web page, it's in a subfolder of the folder containing the web page. This is actually good practice. You want to keep all of your pictures, all of your images together. Otherwise, sooner or later, this nursery web folder is going to get very, very full. But look what happens when I reload the page. I can no longer see the image. The browser doesn't know where the image is. But I can fix this by modifying the code here slightly. In the source attribute, I'm going to specify pictures. So now I am saying what the name of the file is, but I'm also saying where it is in relation to this web page. Let's save this and take a look at the effect. We're back in business. Now I said to you, HTML tags normally come in pairs. Well, that's true. But there are some tags which are an exception, and the image tag is one of them. I don't need a closing image tag. I can get rid of that altogether. And it'll still work. Let's take a look. That's fine. It's considered good practice, actually, to put a forward slash here inside the angle brackets. So let's save it, take a look, and that's working fine. Give it a go yourself. Perhaps you could try putting a couple of images on the same page. See how they look. You'll need to either create the images for yourself or download something from the World Wide Web. Just be careful. If you're downloading images from the web, make sure that you observe copyright. Some people don't like you using their images on your web page, particularly if you intend to make money out of it. Wikipedia has a number of images that you can use freely, as long as you're using them for educational purposes.